The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's August. It's the 30th. Second last day. I thought it was a last. I thought August only had 30 days, but oh. then I quickly checked right now. You don't even have to check. You just have to remember that rhyme. I I do what, 30... the knuckle thing. What? Oh, you remember the knuckle thing? I'd never heard of the knuckle. Isn't thing. it like January on your knuckle, and then the dip is February. Oh, and then March, and then April, and so on and so that forth. That checks out. Yeah. Okay. Well, you could also remember 30 <laughs> days has September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except February. We won't have to talk about that one off air. That just went right over my head. It's kind of long now that you mentioned it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Northern Lights this morning. Did you see them? Of course not. I saw them on the picture you sent me. Yeah. I was so jealous. Day two in a row. I have missed these wonders in the sky. What about last night? I remember I got the same alert that I got last night. I was lying in bed like 930 and then my app was like, hey, buddy, (laughs) if you want to stay up, they're going to be shining. And I was like... Fell asleep. Yeah, I didn't get an alert, but I was sitting around a campfire and I was dead tired, but I was determined (laughs) that perhaps I might see these Northern Lights. And I stayed there well past 11 and I just kept like stretching my neck, looking up to the sky, being like, come on, Northern Lights, come on, Northern Lights. Finally, I went to bed. And of course, I didn't get up early enough this time. See, this, this is what you learn now. You go to bed early, you wake up early, you see the Northern Lights in the morning like myself. I'm not happy with myself, Steph. I made a really stupid move yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but please tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made a really a, a major fiscally irresponsible move yesterday. I, I was really craving a dessert. Yeah. And I was walk, I was going grocery shopping, and this is what's, where it stemmed from. And I was like walking past the pastries. I was like, eh, I'm not feeling any of those today. Go down the frozen aisle where the ice cream is. And I'm seeing some stuff, and I was like, eh, $6 here, $7 there. I was like, eh, if it was on sale, 5 bucks maybe kind of thing. Like <laughs> the frugal part of me saying, if it was $1 cheaper, yeah. then I would buy it. Like, come if on. If it had a yellow sticker, exactly. it would make me what? feel better about spending the $7. Why? Like, why? I don't know why. But so I didn't buy any desserts when I went grocery shopping but then as I was coming home for the past couple days I have been just dreaming of having like a marble slab cake or marble slab ice cream okay oh. I've never had it before but I live right beside it and I walk by it all the time okay and you've just been like hoping that it's delicious yeah and I just have like this like absolutely amazing like picture and taste in my mind of be like oh it's gonna be the best thing ever so you know what I did yesterday after grocery shopping and not buying a five dollar, six dollar like ice cream. What'd you do, Sean? I went and bought a thirty five dollar cake You're yesterday. Kidding. Thirty five dollars. Thirty five dollars. You didn't just think like <laughs> I could just get one ice cream cone from this place. You want a thirty five dollar cake? <laughs> I got tempted. I got tempted, but I'm like, it's thirty five dollars. It has to be good. It was average. (laughs) It was average? (laughs) Like, it could have tasted the same as the stuff inside the pint of ice cream that you buy at the store for six bucks. I was like, well, I mean... This could be a reason why it's thirty five dollars. It's amazing. It, you built it up too much in their brain, and then you built it up even more when you gave them thirty five dollars for it. That it had no chance of and, being good. And this is the worst part about it. As I was walking home, I had cake in hand, and my roommate walks by me. I think he's going out to sight, right? And he was like, "Oh, you got a cake," and I couldn't admit to him that it was just for me. I was like, "Yeah, it's someone's birthday in the office." Oh my gosh, Sean, you better. Have Peace. My birthday was last month. And, the, and the, the worst part about it is we share a fridge, so he's going to come home. And of course, I stab the cake with my fork, right? Yeah, I don't cut, cut slices. <laughs> he's going to be like, oh, I thought it was someone's birthday, but there's just a bunch of fork stabs in it with cake. Please continue to be fiscally irresponsible. This is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> Sean, you remember a couple weeks ago when you did a reverse level up your lexicon and taught me what quiet quitting was? I do remember that. That was my only level up lexicon I think I've ever done for you. (laughs) Well, if you need a quick refresher, quiet quitting was when an employee gets fed up with their work and being asked to go over and above. And so instead... 
they just start doing less and less and basically do only what was written in their offer of yeah. employment and only between the hours that they agreed upon and they just stop being uh, that stand-up employee that they once were and they just are like, I'm looking for another job, I'm on my way out and I'm not giving any extra of my life to this place. Yeah, I think like the very simple like layman's term for it is like work-life balance is what they're focusing on now, not like hustling for the extra credit and everything. Well, now there's a new term. Okay. And it's called quiet firing. Interesting. I'm interested <laughs> to see what this is. So this is basically, it's not an answer to quiet quitting. Apparently it's like a thing that's just never had quite a term for it before. Oh. But it's where employers make the employees work life basically unbearable. Where they're oh. like, I want you to leave on your own accord because I don't like you, but I don't really have enough grounds to fire you. So oh, I'm just going to make it not great for you. So we're going to do some nagging. We're going to do some fault finding. We're going to do uh, thwarting any chance of you making an advancement. We're just going to be like, you know what? You're not a great employee, oh. so I'm just not going to treat you well. So make their life a living hell at work so they leave. Yeah, so they're quietly oh. firing you, but they're not having to give you the severance right. package or have that tough conversation of like, you're not really performing you. well anymore. I know, right? Can we just be like better Good. both <laughs> yeah. sides of the coin? Better employers and better employees and, and find a way to respect each other? No kidding. <laughs> Had a pretty big whirlwind trip to Ontario last week and uh, didn't get much sleep. Now, my husband didn't have to work yesterday. Oh, yeah. And when I got home <laughs> at 2 p.m. after working all day, he was still in bed. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff. <laughs> I was like, have you been sleeping all day? And he said, no, I've been micro napping. Oh, that's a great workaround. I'm stealing that. <laughs> like what the heck is micro napping he said well i've been really trying to get back on to fort mcmurray time and i'm like it's only two hours <laughs> sir uh <laughs> he was like so i've been really trying to convince myself to get up and get out of bed but instead i've been like oh if i just fall asleep for a couple minutes or a couple seconds it'll be okay and so he insists that micro napping is the thing and it's fully all right to get over your jet lag and also fully all right to stay in bed till 2 p.m. after your wife has worked all day long. 100%. He's 100% correct. He needs to take care of his body. He needs to take care of himself. And micro-napping is very healthy for him. Oh, great. This is I'm on Sean's his side. Start saying. He's going to be like, oh, yes, I'm You're just going for a micro-nap. And then two days later, I'll be like, oh, I thought I'd get out of bed now. <laughs> Peter Pond Mall, their Facebook page, they made a post the other day saying, starting yesterday, Monday, uh, the parking lot for the Tim Hortons Wendy's is going to be under construction. So just a heads up, walk-in only, drive-through closed. And even though the drive throughs closed, Steph, I think this is for the better. Yes, for sure. I love the words they're using is uh, parking lot replacement is going to commence <laughs> because I feel like they must be going to try and do something different because usually they'd say parking lot repaving. Ooh. But replacement. Yeah, words matter here, right? Well, yeah, what does it mean? Yeah, because it definitely needs some reconfiguring. The drive through was just an absolute like mess. It'd be like wrapping around in circles, like one would be on the inside, like Wendy's would be on the inside, Tim Hortons would be on the outside or something like that. And then you'd have to leave space for people to drive through. And then you couldn't turn left at some point. And then it was just a confu and then And then on top of that, sorry. <laughs> Sean's passionate about this. There was holes and potholes and craters everywhere. So I think the repavement definitely happening, but some configuration as well. Very true, because I I always cut through that parking lot when I'm going to Superstore. And uh, <laughs> I'm always like, hey, I'm in the correct lane here. You don't have a lane. But like the person's like, I'm going in the Tim Hortons drive through yeah. line before you. And it's like, yeah, but that's not where I'm headed. And I am headed in a lane. Yeah. Um, I also, though, feel like they've given away my like most deepest, darkest secret in telling people to go inside. Oh. Which, like, that drive through line is crazy. I have seen people wait in that line for 20 minutes while I've been <laughs> sipping my ice cap for 19. Such a secret to be like, I'm just going to park and go inside. And then you walk out with your coffee and you're like, wow, not a single car has moved yet. So I'm like, hey, Peter Pond Mall, shh, don't tell people it's open. <laughs> <laughs> also, how sad is it that I'm like actually excited to see what the parking lot looks like afterwards? Like, I'm like waiting for the reveal. <laughs> High stakes. There should over be there. a party, a grand opening of this. <laughs> The internet can be such a fun and silly place a lot of the times, and that's evident by what's going viral this week. And what is that? 
Uh, have you heard the corn song? Oh my god! Everything about corn. Yes, you can't escape it. And there's so many memes about corn too. So if you were missed the corn song, you would be like, "Why does everybody care about corn all of a sudden?" Yeah, and of course, like it just originates from just this innocent interview of a guy interviewing like a little like six year old child about corn, and this is like where it came from. For me, I really like corn. What do you like about corn? Ever since I was told that corn was real, it tasted good. But when I tried it with butter, everything changed. I love corn. Yeah, like, it's just, a, it goes on for about a minute or so, and there's just a bunch of questions that they talk back and forth. And then the internet, this, this is old as time, like 20 years ago, people were just taking random sound clips and then turning them into songs, right? Yeah, just like the auto-tune, like, yeah. and all of a sudden it's stuck in your head, and you're <laughs> like, I can't stop singing about this Linkin Park thing or whatever. Yeah, so I guess apologies in advance if you haven't heard it already, but now here's the th- song that's going to be stuck in your head forever. Me, I really like corn. What do you like about corn? It's cold. It's just so ridiculous, and it's so catchy. Yeah, it's a big lump with knots, and it has the juice, he says. <laughs> I can't think of a more beautiful thing. And now I am craving corn. Like, I think I yeah. might have to have some for dinner tonight, because he's right. It is so delicious. And it's so much better with butter. <laughs> like, I want... Every, I think corn sales are going to go through the roof. I wouldn't be surprised going to the grocery store if corn is, like, sold out. Valid point. Probably salt, too, and butter's next. <laughs> School starting up this week, kind of, for both of the divisions, and they're doing it a little differently. Yeah, they've got this staggered start thing happening at one of the divisions. Yeah. The other division is going full back to school starting yesterday. Yeah, so public school staggered start yesterday was five, six, and seven grades. Today's three, four, eight, and nine. And you only go for one day, and then you're off for the whole week kind of thing, whereas the, the Catholic school division, no staggered entry, and it began yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a learning process because this started during COVID, right? Yes, exactly. So the the previous plan was get the kids back to school and get them to understand yeah. um, how school is now, you know, with desks separated and masks and yeah. uh, hand washing and all these things to, to just kind of get them used to it so that it wasn't quite everybody all at once trying to learn something new. Yeah. And I, I remember the feedback coming back and like, I think kids liked it. Parents liked it. Teachers liked it. People liked it all around for the majority of it. And they're just trying to learn how to revamp it a little bit. But this year, with the public school division, I think people wanted the staggered start after Labor Day. Which I, I completely get. I think it's valid. However, I know that the way Labor Day works in school starting before it is that they have to fit so many days of school in a year. And when Labor Day <laughs> is so late, yeah. as in the first Monday in September, and it's one day earlier than the latest it can possibly be, sometimes school has to start before Labor Day, though it does feel very strange. That's right. And we posed the question over on our Facebook page just to gather like the general uh, feeling of how everyone felt about it. And pretty much every, it's like it's like uh, the public school division was, was it stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's like we want to do the staggered uh, entry, but we just don't have enough days of the school year to do it after Labor Day almost is what I can kind of like just assume right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And some parents are like, yeah, sure, do it. It's great. My kids are both starting new schools this year. But next year when they're used to that school, please let them just go back and get them out of my hair. <laughs> yeah, so many kids are just like, just take my kids away. Put them fully in school. I'm done with them for the summer. Went to a fire last night with a few friends and I felt a little inadequate. Why? What was going on? While we were sitting around the fire, one of uh, the girls opened up her bag and was like, here you go, and handed each of us a little jar of crab apple jelly from the tree in her backyard. Oh, that's just her downsizing. She probably has like 50 <laughs> cans of it at home. Well, she I, thinks she's like doing a favor, but she's just really trying to get it out of her, <laughs> her home. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, Like, thank you so much for sharing. Like, It's a lot of work to make jelly. And then... Our other friend, who was hosting the the party, went inside and grabbed giant jars of applesauce (laughs) that he had just made from some tree that somebody was like, come and get these apples, I'm not going to use it. And he was like, here you go. And I was like, we're the only couple that didn't bring a gift for everyone. I didn't know we were trading preserves tonight. You should have grabbed all your rhubarb. 
Uh, and force sure. your rhubarb on people. And like, here's a gift. I know you have a patch in your backyard you can't get rid of. But exactly. Wouldn't you like this? I think I might have to go home this afternoon and make some bread. Just drop it off on their doorstep. No, do rhubarb. Don't don't put the effort <laughs> into bread. That's a lot of work. Rhubarb. Just chop it down, put it on their doorstep and be like, I got gifts too. Uh, I don't feel like that's <laughs> the same, Sean. I feel like that'll be like, thank you for giving me your garbage. Rhubarb is awful. Well, it's the same with jelly. You think? Well, a little bit. They want to get rid of it. I don't think they do. I think they're like, I have. You don't think I they have, have like 50 cans the in the kitchen? They might have 50 cans, but I think like they turned their house into a steam room, <laughs> making the jars seal. Yeah. They worked so hard all day picking apples, cutting them up, putting them through a cheese yeah. cloth. Like they did a lot of work for that. I don't think that they're trying to get rid of it. I okay. think they're like, here is a gift of my all blood, right. sweat, and tears. I don't know. I, I can't just give them something I inadvertently watered all summer because it was next to the pumpkin. <laughs> all right. Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.